Good evening and welcome to Masterclass Junior. It is Friday again. We've made it through another week. Now I've got a cracking little recipe for you. We're going to go katsu chicken tonight. I don't know about you, but as a family, we love Wagamamas. We used to go lots. And this is inspired by kind of the super popular katsu chicken. It is like their best selling dish. Uh, and if you love it, this recipe is absolutely for you. Or if you know somebody, make sure you share this video to them because they'll be able to cook it. It's super easy. Um, we're gonna serve it with some broccoli, which isn't on the ingredients list. This is just something I had a look through the fridge. I thought I'll serve something with it. Um, so it's just a dead simple dish. So we're gonna actually roast some broccoli with some garlic, really easy. So Pops, let's get the foil. We the um, now I'm gonna slice it actually. So we've got a bit of foil here. You don't need foil uh, on these non-stick trays, but we wanna kind of create a bit of a pocket um, to encase the broccoli in um, so that it's not just constantly exposed to the heat of the oven. So. Um, broccoli into there please Pops and let's put a little bit of oil on the bottom first okay. sorry my fault a little bit of oil there right there you go and then let me put a little bit on top did I get you, yeah, you did. oh sorry mix it all up a little bit and then we'll season it up do you want to season it yeah. bit of salt and pepper I will slice the garlic so we're just going to get this off into the oven really quick and then it's out of the way. So nice slices of garlic. These are going to sort of more sort of perfume the dish with garlic rather than, like if you crush them, they would go quite bitter, quite, that'll do, quite quickly. Whereas we just want that nice aroma. Once the steam starts working on, out of the broccoli, it will mix with the garlic and the pepper and everything else. It'll be really, really cool. Right, garlic in. I want you to rub that garlic around, get all the oil, get all the salt and pepper kind of mixed up, okay. and then you go wash your hands, and then I'll get it in the oven. So kind of move it around. The idea is to kind of get everything coated, get the flavors working together. Garlic and broccoli, absolute killer combination. Really, really good. Um, and then the salt and pepper just bring it all. Right, you wash your hands. So what I'm gonna do, and we cut into this, Emily. Yeah. So I'm just gonna tuck the edges in like this. So kind of like that, like a boat. And I wanna open it, some of it out, but kind of encase it at the same time. So there's a bit of protection, but some of the bits will roast and go a bit gnarly. So pop that in the oven, Pops. And we will talk rice. Now, let's get the pan on first. So. To make some rice, we're gonna serve our katsu chicken with rice and peas and soy sauce. I have exactly one mug of rice here. We're gonna cook this based on the absorption method, okay? So, Pops, one, one mug of rice. And two cups of water. And two mugs of water. Doesn't matter what size mug or cup it is, just make sure that you're on a two to one ratio. So, um, usually I would always say like a little six ounce coffee cup is one portion, about 60 grams they reckon. Oh, here we go. So we, we've got four of us in our family, so we've got, you know, we've got about 100, 220, 30 grams of rice there. Um, and then we're going to get it on the heat, get it going nice and quick so that we can concentrate on the other things. Okay, right, here we go. Could you have got any more water in there? Look at the concentration. Oh, well done. You made it. Give me that. Show them your tongue. No. Go on. <laughs> she has had the bluest sweet or something you have ever seen. She'll show you in a minute. Right, let's get that rice on. So let's just move that over there because we will use that pan soon enough. Leave that there. Right, so. In our house, um, we have one vegetarian and three meat eaters, okay? So we're doing um, some chicken, but we're also gonna do cauliflower as a sort of panko crispy breadcrumb dish. So we're gonna start with our cauliflower first. Emily's racing around. Again. Do we think, is she all right? Is she happy today? She's smiling, she's, she's checking she's cameras. She's, she's behind the cameras. Yeah, one day she will appear. 
Right, so we're just going to cut florets off. That's what they're called, Pops. Did you know that? Like yeah. So, how many will Mum eat, do you think? A few. Five? So you can make them smaller and you can make them bigger, but you need to remember, they need to all cook at the same time. I would do that many. Do that many? Yeah. Is that enough for Mum? I think it is. Okay, so, what we're going to do is, because my wife's a vegetarian, we're going to make those first, and then when they're breadcrumbed, we'll do the chicken. Um, so... We need the flour and the eggs bringing in. You need to crack the eggs. I'm going to talk flour with people. So you crack those, whisk them up with a fork, yeah? I'm going to talk flour. Okay, so we've got our flour here that we're going to dip our cauliflower in. So I'm just going to season that up because I think it gives a little bit of flavour in the middle, which is nice because actually once they're breadcrumbed, they kind of steam inside, so they don't actually have any flavour which is why this works really well for katsu, because it's full flavoured. Now, to get the flour to stick to our cauliflower, I'm going to run it under a little bit of water. Okay, and that will just help stick. All right? And it's these little touches that really make the difference. Right, are we going to speed it up a bit, Pops? Yeah. I ain't got time to wait for you. Okay. <laughs> get whiskey in your eggs. It's all right, it's fine, don't worry. Uh, we've got a question. Yeah. Um, roughly, uh, what are you using for seasoning? A little bit of salt and pepper. But what I would say is, if you've got any ground onion powder or garlic powder or a bit of smoked paprika, really works. Any sort of flavour like that, you can put through there. So if you were wanting to go down the Asian route, you could put a bit of ginger in there. You could put a bit of Chinese five spice. That would work really well. And then you get another layer of seasoning, another layer of flavour, and that just adds to the whole flavour of the dish. Good question, Natalie. Too. Yeah, we're going to breadcrumbs in there. So, cauliflower into here. Okay? Perfect. Just like that, as Tommy Cooper would say. Just like that. Yeah, but we're doing the cauliflower first. Once the cauliflower's done, then we'll do the chicken. Okay. Got it? Can you turn those round and move them about? So let's bring, these are panko breadcrumbs. So these are like a Japanese style breadcrumb. Basically, they dry the bread out so it's super dry, then they crunch it down. These are really nice blue dragon ones, so they're kind of all, they're quite big chunks of bread, so you end up with really, really crispy pieces of chicken or cauliflower. They're really worth looking out for. If you can't get them in the shops or supermarkets, you can get them online. Quite a few of the Chinese supermarkets are now doing online delivery, so you can kind of fill your store cupboards with awesome stuff that you wouldn't normally get in a, a Tesco's or a Sainsbury's or an Asda. We have another question. Yeah. What other option uh, can you have for egg for vegans? Um, you can make an egg replacement with chia seed or flax seed, and I think if I remember rightly, it is a two to one ratio. So in terms of volume, one part seeds to two part water. And the way that the chia or the flax, they kind of absorb and they swell up and they create a similar texture to, um, to egg. What you could also use is an unsweetened yogurt. So like sometimes when people do um, like deep fried chicken, they use buttermilk. So if you can create that same kind of buttermilk type texture, so you could take um, a plain vegan yogurt, like a, a coconut yogurt, an unsweetened one, add a little bit of lemon juice, let it down a little bit with water and use that. Basically what the egg is doing is just sticking the breadcrumbs to it, okay? So it's about, I, I always find when you're looking at plant-based eating and things like that, it's about changing your approach to what, Traditionally, you always did. So just because it's egg, think about what the egg is doing and work out how to do that without egg. And that's kind of how my brain works when I'm trying to do plant-based cookery. And I do get asked all the time about it. And I'm always, I'm always doing projects on plant-based cooking for manufacturers and restaurants and you know, retailers and all sorts of stuff. So it's, yeah, it's good. It's really interesting. Have you seen the bread on the yeah. You know what she's like, Pops? 
She likes everything in, in her frame. Okay? So, you move across and I will shake them around, yeah? Like this. Go on, in you go. So, lift the breadcrumbs up like that first. Gives you a fighting chance. And then put some breadcrumbs in your hand and then just kind of roll it around like that, you see? Yeah. And then you end up... And if you see, can you see there, Emily? Yeah. That white bit, we've missed a bit. Because it's quite hard to get it all on a cauliflower because it's all lumpy and bumpy, isn't it? Okay. You can. The thing with broccoli is you, you have to remember it, it's not very absorbent. So you have to try, the key is to try and get the breadcrumbs to stick to it. And it just seems to work really well with cauliflower. So I'm going to pop that straight onto one of our masterclass non stick trays. It will not stick on these. These trays are amazing, they work so well. Do you want me to do that and you lift them out? Yeah. All right. Good job. Brilliant. Well done. So. Let's just coat these. Have we got any more questions? I'm enjoying the questions firing in. Oh. Good, good. What we were talking about on Wednesday as well is in terms of our broadcast time. So at the moment we're doing five o'clock, but we would love to know what the right time for everybody is so that we can either do it live or we can kind of pre-record one for the weekend or, or whatever. But you know, if you've got a particular opinion on when you think would be a good time to do it, please let us know. Right, Pops, go wash your hands and then we'll do the chicken quite quickly, yeah? Okay. I'm going to get the cauliflower in while we're doing that. So, I'll just lift this up onto here so you can see the cauliflower. And then just a little drizzle of oil. You really don't need much. The days of needing to deep fry them are gone. You don't need to do that. See how I just sort of shake them around? And then they've all got a tiny little bit of coating of oil on. And that's it. That's all we need. They can go in the oven. Brilliant. Broccoli's looking good. Right, so let's just get, have a look at that chicken before we do that. I would just like to season this chicken up so it's cut into little pieces. Do you want to do the pepper? Again, nice little layers of flavour all the way. All right, it doesn't need much. That'll do. Right, I'm going to lift this up and pop this into the flour I'll... and turn that around. So you stay flour free if you can. Okay, because I'm doing egg and bread. Egg. And you do the egg and lift it into the chicken and if, uh, into the breadcrumbs. But if we don't have enough, I'll get some more breadcrumbs. So lift a piece out. What temperature? Uh, well, my ovens are fan ovens. They're new AEG ovens, so that in terms of the heat distribution, it's very consistent. Gone are the days where there's like a hot bit and a cold bit, because at the back of the oven is a fan, and it's pushing the heat outwards towards the oven door and then back again. And they do a lot of stuff about circulating the heat and things like that. So, but if you've got a gas oven, what I would always say is the top of the oven will be hotter than the bottom with gas by sheer nature of it. But electric fan ovens, we're at 180. They'll take about 10, 12 minutes. If you have leftover cauliflower from the previous night's meal, it works really, really well because they're a little bit softer and a bit more tender, but you have to watch the absorption because um, cauliflower can absorb quite a bit of water. I'm beating you. You're beating me, are you? I'm beating you. Oh, you're beating me. I thought you were being me. I've got a lot of people say you're a bit too much like me as it is. You're losing. You snooze, you lose. Right, so we're just going to roll the chicken very quickly and light of hand, okay? So it's kind of like move it around, just roll it up. You don't want like too much on there, but then you also don't want not a lot on there. You just want a nice coating, move them around. This is great for like doubling up as well because you can double a batch. I mean, it's quite a big thing to, to do all this, get all these bread crumbed and everything. So if you're gonna do it, do twice or three or four times as much as you need. Um, and then just lay them on a tray and freeze them. And when they're frozen, then put them in a Ziploc bag and then you've got them. And they're so much nicer. I know, we missed one. They're so much nicer than the shop-bought stuff. You know exactly what's gone in there and they're just nicer. Yeah? How many left have we got? Um, are we going to squeeze them out? Yeah, we are. Right. Okay, so let's get another tray. So this is another one of the masterclass ones. 
Just a little drizzle along the bottom. Sorry, Emily. Yeah. Like the last few slices of Yeah. Totally. But stick them in the oven or in the toaster. Dry them out. If you dry the bread out, so like stick it in the oven at like 60 degrees for 20 minutes uh, and really dry it rather than, maybe not the toaster because, or very lightly toasted because you don't want the colour because you're going to get the colour on the second cook. Um, but yeah, dry them out in the oven um, and then blitz them up. Um, or if you haven't got the time, but you've got the bread, chuck it in the freezer and just write on the bag for breadcrumbs. Um, and then you can just dry them out from frozen then. Uh, and you're not wasting it. And you are actually making a really, really good product. Because these, I mean, all chefs now use panko breadcrumbs because you just get such a better product at the end. The drier, the better. Right, I'm going to shift these. Have you got distracted, Poppy? Do you want to go that side of the camera now? Can I have a tea towel, please? That'll do. Oh, yes, yeah, here, sorry. Okay, right. So, what I'd like you to do, Pops, lift the chicken out onto the oil, and then when you've lifted them all out, we're going to turn them over. And that gives them a tiny little glisten of oil. So we're sort of trying to be a little bit lighter, get a nice crispness. We don't want to deep fry these. You don't need to. They will crisp up anyway. So we'll just turn them over and get that nice, you see how I've done that, Pops? Just move, turn, and roll. And that will just give a nice light coating. I'm just gonna get a dishcloth so that we can have a wipe up. And then we'll get this katsu sauce done. How are you feeling about katsu, Poppy? Are you gonna give it a try? I've never tried it. Yeah, you have a little bit of curry at school, you used to, didn't you? Yeah. A few curry sauces. So it's just like that, nothing too scary. Right, the rice. Let me show you this, Emily. Can you see it? Can you see those little pockets that it's making? Yeah? yeah. So that's, this is the absorption method. Poppy, they can go straight in the oven, please. This is the absorption method. Uh, and you can just see that two to one ratio means that the rice is just absorbing. It's absolutely the rule to stick to. Um, and it works really, really well. Right, I'm going to wipe this down and then we're going to turn the board over, okay? In fact, I'm going to swap it over. Right, fresh chopping board, onions, your favourite task, Poppy Sidwell. Do you want me to do it? Yeah. Alright. Okay, let's do an onion lesson, Emily. We've done a few, but we can never not have enough onion lessons. You get the garlic crusher which is somewhere. Right, onions. So, I've kept the core on. We want to cut this. I'm just going to get the heat on my pan. So, yep, that's good. I'm going to cut this nice and fine because I'm not going to liquidise this sauce, but if you want to liquidise it, you absolutely can. If you want it really, really smooth. Is there not? It'll be about somewhere. Why don't you use the zester? Zester. Zester's brilliant for that job. That's it. So, no, straight into the pan, please. Okay. Save on washing up. So, this again is a sauce that you would um, absolutely double up on, make more, and whatever's left over, chuck in the freezer for another day because you can then just add whatever sort of flavour you want. If you want a really nice sort of cauliflower curry, you could do that. You could do a chicken curry. You could do what you like with it. Make it into a soup. Add some sweet potatoes, butternut squash, pint of stock and blend it all up and you have like this amazing sweet potato um, curry sauce. Delicious. Right. So again, so with the, um, with the onion, it's cut in half and then we're just going to slice down like that. So that little bit there, we're not cutting through the onion, we're allowing it to stay together and hold its shape for as long as possible. Then we cut in horizontally, and let me just show you that, Emily. Which camera would you like me to show that to? This one here. Do you see how it's not cut all the way through? Yeah? So now when I slice, so I'm pinching it together like that. Nice sharp knife. And then it's effortless, and you just glide through it. Yeah? Do you, yeah, do you want to get a spoon from the back there? Black plastic one. And you can start stirring. 
Because you're good at that, aren't you? Stirring. Don't, need, don't nibble those breadcrumbs, you. Right, start stirring. Okay. Good, so. Start moving everything round. The reason why I've chosen this pan as well is it's a shallow pan, so the heat is widely distributed. If you use a really small pan, then all the ingredients are on top of each other. Let me put the uh, fan on, there you go. Oh, onions have got her again. That's because you've got a blue tongue, Poppy. Right, onions. So that's the last of the onions. So the recipe says one onion, but obviously what we bought were quite small onions. So we needed to double up. Can I borrow that cloth a sec? Oh no, it's all right, there's one here. All right, let's have a quick wipe. You all right? Go and have a piece of, go and have a minute. The onions, one, poppy nil. And temperature. 180 degrees, okay, and when cooking chicken, it needs to be fully cooked all the way through. If you have a thermometer, make sure it's 75 degrees or above, okay, and that means it's totally cooked. If you don't have one, get one, or cut one in half. The biggest piece of chicken, cut it in half, and if that is cooked, everything else will be. Little tip for you there. Right, ginger, okay. No problem. Where's my zester? So Poppy used this uh, microplane type style zester. So a, it's, they call it a plane. Um, so it's for grating parmesan and lemon zest and things like that. But it's brilliant for garlic. Uh, good fresh garlic that's not wrinkly. You can just zest it straight in. You don't need to peel it all. But you definitely need to get a good dose of garlic in it. And I wouldn't use um, dried ginger for this. I would always use fresh because I just think you get a nicer flavour. You all right? Good. She's, oh, I know, it does smell good, doesn't it? It's good. This is what you want on a Friday evening after another long week. Although I say a long week, it is flying at the moment because, you know, we're busy doing everything like everyone else is doing, you know, homeschooling and usual day at work and out walking and things like that at the weekends. The weather's amazing at the moment. Can I rerun the sauce? Of course I can. So, to make your katsu sauce, we've started off with two cloves of garlic and one large white onion chopped, and then a thumb of ginger. We're gonna add a little salt to this because that helps draw the moisture out of the onions and um, helps them all even cook. We are then going to add our spices, okay? So we have got in here uh, ground cumin. I think it's a tablespoon on the recipe. Poppy, can you just check my spice recipes on there? How much cumin in the sauce? Yeah, after that. Right, tablespoon of cumin, tablespoon of curry powder, and then a teaspoon of chili flakes. You could add fresh chili if you want. And obviously, these are the ratios, so it's equal amounts of cumin to curry powder, and then half the amount of chili. But if you want to adjust it, you can absolutely do that, because everybody's sensitivity to spice is different, and some people want it stronger than others. So, can you smell those spices? Smell, smell good? Coconut Right, so you're going to pour the coconut in, milk in. So we've got 400 gram tin of coconut. Milk. Of coconut milk, yes. It doesn't smell very good. Thank you. Right, and then chicken stock. Now, if you were making this vegetarian, you would add vegetable stock. It's absolutely fine. Either one, really. Um, it's 200 mils. So pour that in, Pops. And then we're going to get the heat going. Do you want to open? Okay. Really good sauce, this. Gluten-free. It will naturally thicken with the coconut, which is great. Um, like uh, not yet, but can you grab me the peas? 
and we are going to add the peas to the rice. So scatter those over pots. So we've got frozen peas straight out the freezer. Rice is nearly done, so we're just going to add the peas in and that will cook them through. And the good thing about that is they won't overcook, which is always nice. They will just cook like the... They'll just be tender, which is really nice because they have a habit of overcooking peas, people, really. Have you got any more of your awesome questions, Emily? Mom just pop the plate idea. on there. What did Mum have an idea of? Did it have anything to do with gin and tonics? No, it had to do with Emily. Oh, what's that? She said on the last one, Emily should do... do on the work. last episode, we should swap jobs That's and I will film. No, you'll, that'll never happen, Poppy. So, somebody, I've got a question for you. We'll pop Go on, then. No. Go on. Yep. Follow the instructions. You're going to need to dilute it, basically, because it's like a, an ambient product that sits in the cupboard, and you need to turn it into cream. And on the side of the packet will be an instruction pack where you can kind of dilute it. I think you mix it with water and whisk it all up until it breaks, or you can grate it in to water, uh, mix it all up, and you end up with that nice coconut block. Right, so that is just cooking down nicely. So all you need to do now is simmer that, and it will reduce... Okay, and thicken. Emily should definitely come on. She that. definitely should. Right, I've lost my tea towel again. Yes, yeah, so What have you done with it, Pops? You, I, I haven't done anything. Oh, it's here, because I've cried on it. Told you, something to do with you. Thank you. Right, let's have a little look. Broccoli done. Do you know what the good thing about the broccoli is? Uh, Poppy, can you just grab me the sesame seeds from up there? Because I think that will look really, really nice. I'm just going to grab a plate. One of these nice black Maxwell Williams plates will look good. Oh, Emily's burst into action. There must be a new camera angle. There we go. Right. Yep, definitely. Just wait. So let's get some tongs. We're getting quite close to cooking. I'm going to be asking for a question in a minute because I've got a little bit of time to kill. We're quick today. How long are we doing for time, Pop? Um, Emily? Uh, you've got three, minutes. three minutes? I feel like I might run over tonight. Anyway, any questions? Uh, if we don't the broccoli, what can we serve it Oh, all sorts of things. I mean, look at that. Why would you not want to serve it with broccoli, Emily? <laughs> so few black and white sesame seeds on there, just lovely. It'll just make it delicious. It's not essential. If you've got them on the shelf or in the cupboard, use them. But look at those. They look lovely. Smells amazing, like really savoury. I think when you roast broccoli, it changes. I personally prefer roasted broccoli to boiled or steamed. I think it's really nice. Do you want to try a bit? Um, yeah. yeah, have a try. See what you think. I need a fork. Okay. Need to get out of my way. No, I'm not in your way. You are a little bit. So, can you see the uh, sauce is just sort of naturally thickening, reducing, bringing it all together? Such a good sauce, Katsu. It really, really is. What do you think? She can't speak. She's got a mouthful of broccoli, which I never thought I'd hear myself say, <laughs> if I'm perfectly honest. So, that's quite a good thing. It's good. It's nice, isn't it? Do you prefer that, or do you like it just boiled? I like both, but I prefer it being boiled. You prefer it boiled, it's do you? very nice. Okay. Very politically correct answer, Poppy. Well done. <laughs> There's hope for you yet. Right, so, our cauliflower is done, so I'm just going to pop that there. Super easy to do. Right, let's get another plate, actually, um, so that we can do mums. You're not exactly working the camera, Poppy. Just sat there eating. <laughs> right, so we've got two here. So, let's move that over. Excuse me. I'm just going to see how the rice... Can you see that, Emily? Yeah. Do you see how it's just cooked up? It's fluffy. The water has gone. It's perfectly cooked. Can you add a little bit of soy sauce to that for me, Poppy? Not too much, please. She's a soy sauce monster. We have to watch her. Ration her, <laughs> don't we? Go on. 
It just gives it a little bit of flavour running through it. Okay, that'll do. Don't look at me like that. Right. Can I try a bit? Push cam. Go for it. So you could do this with rice or noodles. I've just chosen to do it with rice today. Um, but it could change, it could be either one. Yeah, of course. Juicy <laughs> cold. Yeah. She's got the power, she's got the camera, you see. Not right. The last one. No, no. Never know. Maybe we should do a special Emily episode, pre recorded. Maybe we'll have to do a Facebook poll out there. See if they want Emily cooking. I won't take it personal. Right. Let's get some broccoli. And it's just a little bit of rice on there. That's all right. I'll forgive you. So, nice piece of broccoli on there. Got little charred bits. Got some lovely bits there. Really, really nice. The chicken nearly done. Chicken is nearly done. So, I'm going to take... You see? Let me... I want you to see if you can hear how crispy these are. Look. Can you hear how crispy they are? Yeah? So, there we go. That's for your mum. Really she will enjoy it. I know she will. Right, and let's get the chicken out. And this will be cooked. And again, you can see how crispy. You can hear them crackling and crisping away, yeah? I know you do. I know you do. Right. So, yeah, yeah. Let's just see a couple on there. <laughs> I'm having to hold her back. This is your kind of dinner, isn't it? Right. Sauce, done. Okay. There we go. Right. Watch out. Let me get a little spoon here. Can you see this all right, Emily? Are we going to say, Poppy, don't touch this. We've got to take a photograph of it. <laughs> there we go. Right. In fact, I was wondering if I had a little bowl. Put this in on the side. I tell you what, I've, I've had my three minute warning. I'm going to put it on the side actually, so that you can dip it in. That's a good idea. It is a good idea. I'll have that now, please. Alright. So your katsu sauce is just thickened a little. You could reduce it even more if you wanted to. Sauce. Absolutely. Make more than you need. Batch cooking is totally the best way to make cooking easier. When you have time, you make this. When you don't have time, you thaw it. All right, so batch cook it, double, treble, quadruple it, and then put them into reusable bags. Label them up before you put them in the freezer, because otherwise it'll go into the freezer of doom and you will never remember what it is. So always label it and then you just pull it straight out of the freezer and you've got options. And when you've got options, cooking's really, really easy. So look, we have finished this recipe. I hope you have a fantastic weekend. Um, I hope you get a chance to cook this or if you're cooking it now, brilliant, go eat your dinner. Um, if you are watching this and thinking, do you know what, we'll do that tomorrow. Send us a picture, let us know how you get on because We'd love to know how people get on cooking our recipes. Um, next week on Monday, we will be back. Masterclass UK's Facebook page doing pancakes, but pancakes with a difference. I've got one sweet pancake. I've got two savoury ideas for you. Uh, and Poppy's got an Instagram hack to show you with a pancake, haven't you? Do you remember? Where you fold it and cut it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and on Wednesday, we're going to be making vegan enchiladas that are amazing, vegan or not. You will love them. And then we will be, on Friday, we're doing some tacos for the kind of weekend. So if you get time, please join us. Cook with us if you want to, or just have a go at the recipes when you're ready. But thank you very much. If you need the recipes, go to masterclass.co website and they'll be there. And the shopping list for next week's recipes, I'll be going on the Facebook page soon as well. Thank you very much. Have a great weekend.